Good morning, riders and ridettes. Once again, you find me at the base of the front range of the Colorado Rockies, but not for long, because we are going on a road trip. Returning viewers will know that after my job went full-time remote due to COVID, I decided to tow my 2019 Triumph Speed Twin out here to Colorado, where I've been enjoying the awesome roads and scenery for the last month. But this state is huge, and from where I'm staying in Longmont, there's only so much that I can access within a day's ride. So I decided that I was going to need to do a little tour out to the western parts of the state. Without giving too much away, the plan is to go down through Breckenridge and then over to an area in the direction of Durango that's known as the Swiss Alps of North America. From there, I'll be going up to Grand Junction to explore the town for two days and then coming all the way back here to Longmont. In addition to finding out what the rest of Colorado has to offer in terms of roads and mountains, I'm also going to find out what my Triumph Speed Twin has to offer in terms of touring capability. At five days and well over a thousand miles, this will be by far the longest trip I've taken this bike on. Traveling alone into parts unknown is kind of my favorite thing about motorcycling, so I'm really excited to find out how well my favorite motorcycle handles it. Today is September 17th, uh, might take me a little while to edit this video. But as you can see, the smoke from the wildfires here in Colorado is pretty thick today. And I suspect we're getting some of it from California and Oregon as well. Visibility is sadly pretty limited. But it has been really clear here recently, so I'm hoping that maybe once I get over a few ranges, it might clear up again. Well, whatever the mountain gods decide to offer us, we're going to make the most of it. Let's chew up a few more miles, and then I'll tell you a little bit about how I have this bike set up for a tour. Alright, we're taking a little break here on Route 6, just outside of Golden. I'm going to show you how I've got my Speed Twin set up for a tour. Now remember, this is my first serious long road trip I've taken with this bike, so a lot of this is going to change as I discover things that don't work, you know, unknown unknowns. But here's what I've got for now. Obviously, the most important component is luggage. I'm using my SW Motec Blaze saddlebags. I have a video review on these bags that you should check out if you haven't already, but in that video I was careful to mention that I hadn't done any real long distance touring with these yet, so this weekend is when we're going to find out how tough they really are. The key feature of these bags is the attachment system. I go into more detail in my other video, but the short version is when you remove them they leave almost nothing behind, so your bike looks totally stock. It doesn't have like big brackets hanging down underneath the subframe, which is a look that I don't really like on this type of motorcycle. Uh, the other thing is that they expand. They have this little zippered gusset that when you open it, it will take the capacity from 14 liters each side to 21 liters each side for a total of 42 liters, which seemed like a lot until I started packing them. As you can see, I've got them pretty full. I did fit a pretty good amount of stuff in there though for this five day trip. Next, bungeed here in the center is all my rain gear, which is a pair of Revit rain pants, a Nelson Rig rain coat, like an overcoat that goes over my motorcycle jacket. And it's also where I store my other pair of gloves. Uh, these are my waterproof cold weather gloves. So my warm weather gloves are in the rain gear bag right now. I'm actually about to switch them because it's pretty hot out. Before we move forward, uh, you'll see here that I've got my H1 Zoom handy microphone stuck to the back of my rear mudguard like I always do. Anyways, moving forwards, this is the same cell phone mount and GoPro mount that I always have on here. The GoPro, you know, I just have for uh, getting that second camera angle for moto vlogs. The cell phone mount, I don't even remember where I got this from, but it's uh, the only one I could find that opens wide enough to hold my Google Pixel 3XL. Last thing I should mention is that I'm on these brand new tires. 
These are Michelin Road 5s. I recently did a video about getting these installed, which you should also check out if you haven't already. This is very much a sport touring tire with a hard, durable tread compound in the center, plenty of rain siping for nasty weather, and a soft, sporty compound on the outside for carving up these canyons. I can't say too much about how good they are because they're only about 100 miles old right now. Ask me again in five days. All right, well, I'm getting hot, so let's keep rolling. So anyways, I unfortunately got stuck behind a ton of tourist traffic on that road. That's what I get for not leaving the house until 9.30 this morning. But it was still a really beautiful ride and there are more exciting roads yet to come. The next one being Loveland Pass. I've never been there before, but on Google Maps, it looks like a gorgeous winding mountain pass that takes you up to some ski resorts, which I don't think should be pretty busy this time of year, especially with all the smoke going on. So now I have to slog a few miles of highway to get to the base of the pass, but lucky for you, you can meet me there just like this. Oh, hey, there you are. We're just getting started up Loveland Pass and it is cold. It was hot this morning, really hot. I was sweating a lot, but now we're gaining altitude fast going up Loveland Pass. Man, as fun as these curves are, I do need to take this road seriously. That is not a drop I want to go over. Try not to fly by bicyclists. I don't ride a bicycle myself at this time, but we're all part of the two-wheel family. Looks like we're at the top. Continental Divide, cool. My God, would you look at that? I'm gonna have to stop and get the drone out. For some reason, the GoPro Hero 7 Black mounted to my helmet decided not to record any audio for a while, so I'll recap the next leg of the trip here. As I continued on from Loveland Pass, I was learning that stopping to get out the camera or the drone every time I pass something interesting eats up a lot of time. I had to stop and check out this lake, I had to stop and check out this Winnebago, I had to turn around and go look at these trees which were the very first fall color I'd seen this year. There's just so much neat stuff out here, I can't help myself. When I pulled into a gas station in Breckenridge and realized I was six hours into this four hour ride, I decided I had to commit. No more filming breaks between here and Monarch. While I was at this gas station, a dude on a KTM adventure bike pulled in and then had to leave because the station was out of premium. This made me really appreciate that I was traveling on a bike that only requires regular. Premium gas does become more scarce the further you get from metropolitan areas. 
South of Breckenridge, the landscape opened way up, and in some places I could see so far that my line of sight ended in smoke rather than the nearest mountain range. At other times, distant rows of mountains with haze resting in between them looked like someone had applied the cutout filter in Photoshop. I was really starting to appreciate the huge variety of landscapes and scenery that Colorado has to offer, and all this was only a taste of what I would see over the next few days. Well, you guys, I did it. I made it the rest of the route without stopping to shoot any video. So before I wrap this video up, I have one lesson from today that I want to share with you. You heard me say earlier that I was switching out my foul weather gloves for some perforated gloves because it was so hot. The gloves that I switched to are my Scorpion SG3 perforated leather gauntlet gloves. Now, I got these as my track gloves years ago, and I've never worn them on a long ride like this. I wanted to wear them because, I don't know, I just like the way they look, and I like the extra protection. But because I've never ridden in them for longer than, say, a 20-minute track session, I didn't know how they would fare comfort-wise on a long ride like this. Turns out, not very well. I just know they're going to give me blisters, which I'll have to tape up like I did back in my rowing days. If I can make an analogy, I'm also a bit of a runner. And most runners know that you don't use new gear on race day. Doesn't matter how soft and fresh those brand new socks you got are, if you wear that stuff for the first time during a race, something's gonna go wrong. It'll chafe you or it won't fit right or something. That's a rookie mistake in the running world. And I made the exact same rookie mistake on this motorcycle tour. I wore a pair of gloves that I didn't know would be comfortable for a trip of this length. And it turns out they probably won't be. Aside from that blunder though, I'm feeling pretty good. I have ridden this speed twin over 300 miles in a day in the past, and today I only rode about 220. So my butt, my back, and my wrists have a good amount of life left in them. I think we're here, folks. Yes, we are. Monarch Mountain Lodge. Well, thanks for following along with me on the ride today. If you found this video to be informative or entertaining, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. I've got four more days on this trip and I'll be making a video out of each one. So if you want to see those, I hope you'll subscribe. In the meantime, ride safe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay, I found one more reason why these SG3s weren't the right choice for this trip, or at least not this particular pair. They've got a hole.